So we are dealing with energy methods in fracture and we have learned about the concept of energy release rate. Energy release rate is a concept that is strictly valid in case of linear elastic fracture mechanics. Uh, looking forward to what we are going to do later when we are going to introduce plasticity into uh, our story about fracture. Uh, looking forward to that, we, uh, we would now like to introduce a more general concept, uh, the concept of the J integral. Uh, to get to that concept, uh, we'll first have to understand the concept of configurational forces. This is a, this is a sort of involved, uh, involved idea, so I will go a bit slowly. So uh, let us start by defining uh, this integral. So this integral is defined over an arbitrary deformable volume uh, V uh, surrounded by a uh, surface delta V. So this is an integral over delta V to, who, uh, to delta V, N, J are the components of the normal. These are the normals. So N is the normal, N, J is the Jth component of the normal. Now uh, I define uh, tensor called an energy momentum tensor or an SLV tensor BKJ. This is the energy momentum tensor. And using that I define JK as BKJ NJ DS integrated over the whole surface of the body. So uh, let us assume for this moment for the moment that this volume completely is free of defects and BKJ has this definition. So BKJ is W delta JK minus sigma IJ UI comma K uh, and uh, W as we have already uh, met this quantity is the strain energy density function which is another way of stating the constitutive equation of a material and sigma ij is equal to del w del epsilon ij. We assume that a strain energy density function exists for the material of this yellow body and uh, for linear elastic materials w is equal to half sigma ij epsilon ij. We have already seen that but it is, uh, it is uh, therefore a quadratic function of strain but it doesn't need to be a quadratic function of strain. It can have other forms as well for uh, different other materials. Right now we are only making the assumption that W exists. We are not talking, uh, we are not telling anything about the form of W, just mentioned in passing that in case of a linear elastic material, W has this form, which means that, uh, that W is quadratic in strains because this quantity is C i j k l epsilon k l which makes it epsilon k l epsilon i j therefore it's quadratic in strain uh, but this is not the only form of w different other materials could have different other forms of w and uh, here we are we are dealing with uh, general w and not uh, not uh, constrained to this definition so this is this is not relevant here okay so now uh, let us try to evaluate this integral given that this is the definition of bkj this is the definition of w and the volume is free of any defects okay so that is what we are going to do now let us first calculate bkj comma j let us first calculate this quantity uh, and this quantity of course is W delta JK minus sigma IJ UI comma K J. So if you if you take derivatives of this, you take derivative of W and then you have sigma IJ comma J UI comma K plus uh, sorry minus sigma IJ u i comma k j so this is what you get so this is what i have written here uh, del del w del x j 
w remember is a function of strains so this can be written as del w del epsilon mn del epsilon mn by del xj using the chain rule of partial differentiation so that is what i have done here and delta kj remains the rest of the terms i had in the previous slide as well now uh, remember that sigma mn is del w del epsilon mn so uh, del this is your sigma mn and given that this is sigma mn i am going to evaluate this whole quantity so i am going to evaluate this whole quantity here and in place of epsilon mn i use um comma n plus un comma n half of that and del del xj of that so uh, this would become sigma mn so the half is here sigma mn uh, u m comma n j plus u n comma m j delta k j and uh, if you expand it even more let's use this space you will have half sigma mn u m comma n k plus u you have sigma mn u n comma m k so this is what you will have now in both of these m and n are repeated indices so i can switch n and m so in the second term i'll switch n and m and the second term will become sigma n uh, sigma m n u m comma n k this is what the second term would become and uh, then you see that this and this are essentially the same so uh, you add them the inside becomes 2 sigma mn u m comma n j and there's the half so the half cancels and this is what you will get this is what you will get okay so where i have re replaced m by i n by j and uh, j by k okay. so this is what you get from this first term which is actually uh, the same as the last term okay. so they cancel out so this and this cancels out and in absence of body forces uh, this is equal to zero from equilibrium so this cancels out as well and then you get b k comma j comma j is equal to zero this is what you get so the energy momentum tensor in a defect free region in a defect free region the energy momentum tensor is um, the derivative of the energy momentum tensor the divergence of the energy momentum tensor is equal to zero that's what we have proved so now uh, this is my jk as defined in the previous slide bkj nj so bkj nj can be written as uh, using divergence theorem this can be written as b k j comma j b v over v uh, provided the uh, volume v is uh, devoid of any discontinuity like voids cracks or dislocations any kinds of defects if that is the case then b k j comma j b v is what this integral becomes and we know b k j comma j is zero everywhere therefore j k is equal to zero so in a region which is free of defects b k j uh, j k is equal to zero so if i if i enclose a region which does not contain a defects the volume v is a region in the body that does not contain defects then j k which is an integral which is a contour integral over the surface j k is identically equal to zero uh, 
uh, that follows from the fact that the divergence of the energy momentum tensor in such a region is equal to zero as well. So that's what we have proved. And now uh, I, I'll do a couple of problems to explain this concept. In the first problem, I will take a defect free region and a region free of discontinuities. In the other case, I will take a, uh, take a body which has discontinuities and I will show it to you that uh, JK would be different in the two cases.